Tonight, Kate Merrill takes us deep into the archives of the BAA to explore 124 years worth of adversity and triumph. When we moved into this office space, we really wanted to feature our items, so we have a, uh, a sweep of history. It is a hallway that takes you back in time, filled with trinkets and treasures that are pieces of Boston Marathon legend and history. We have from the original uh, BA Games, the first Boston Marathon in 1897, um, through the early part of the last century when the Canadians came down and had such dominance at Boston. From then to now, this unique collection is a timeline filled with what we don't remember about the storied race to what we will never forget. This may be uh, the first jacket that ever crossed the finish line first at the Boston Marathon. Who could forget that rain-soaked year? Uh, just a couple of years ago. This makeshift museum is nestled in the front offices of the BAA in Boston, but this collection of the past is actually pretty new. You didn't always have a great collection, right? I mean, this is something that's fairly recent. It wasn't until the early 1990s that we began to um, seriously collect. In the early 1990s, um, we were starting to look forward to the 100th Boston Marathon the centennial race in 1996, um, we didn't have much. If you know how the unicorn became the symbol of the BAA, I'll give you $500. I don't know. No one knows. The Boston Athletic Association COO Jack Fleming tells us it was their archivist and historian Gloria Ratty who tracked down the items for a loan from former participants and their families, all to celebrate the 100th running of the race. This was pre um, uh, date, you know, uh, computer days. We right. didn't, we just had telephones and typewriters, letters, letters, etc. So I simply uh, got on the phone yep. and after going to road races week after week. When they saw how we were telling the stories, putting them on display, uh, featuring um, what they gave to us, and in and, and, and by extension them. They said, you know what, just keep it. Every year since, the collection gets bigger and better, and one of Jack's favorites is one of the earliest. It's the second place trophy from the first Boston Marathon. And how these treasures were found is sometimes just as interesting. It was in someone's um, attic, and it was uh, pitted, and we restored it. We put it on a, a new wooden background. Um, it did not look like this when it came to us, um, I can assure you of that. But when the family saw um, how we restored it to its um, original state, they were just amazed. From the first race to the last, each item tells a different story, like every runner to hit the course, a small tribute to a very big part of Boston. It's just a reminder um, on a daily basis to, to all of us here um, that we're working for the people that love the Boston Marathon, that want to participate, but there's um, the spectators, the neighbors, the Boston community as well. We're very proud. Kate Merrill, CBSN, Boston. And our thanks to Jack Fleming for that tour. Jack is one of the people that makes Boston so special, and that is, uh, you know, we're lucky to work with him each and every year, that's for sure. And good luck to Jack as he runs his virtual marathon tomorrow.